Good evening, viewers. A very warm welcome to the Real Talk Show. I, Arvada Shri, a corporate communication coach, entrepreneur, and author of my book, Easy English, would be delighted to be hosting this conversation today. This show is on every Monday and Friday at 9.15 Indian time in the evening. The Real Talk Show is to bring the education leaders from around the globe in order to transform education via the exchange of ideas for change. So it's a great pleasure for me to introduce our speaker today, Mr. Haritosh Srivastava, who is a public speaker coach, who's going to talk to us about the power of story telling in presentation. But before we invite him, let me tell you about his achievement, his interest and the mission. Well, as you all know, uh, Srivastava, Haritosh Srivastava is from England and his hobby is to talk about these stories. Why he has taken this? Let me open the screen. You will also enjoy about it. Hold on, please. Just give me a minute, I'm just doing it. So Mr. Haritosh Srivastav is also an author, is a bestseller author. Well, about him, <laughs> take a little time to open up the screen. Well, he's a public speaking coach, certified mentor, as well as a passionate storyteller. He is an award-winning speaker, having won accolades in India, the US, as well as the UK. He loves to mentor and coach young professionals and students in their end of years, making the journey better and beautiful. He is also, as I told you, author of the Amazon bestseller, Small Town, Bigger Dreams, lovely title, which was launched in 2021 and have been among the top five personal time management bestseller, Amazon, uh, bestseller books in Amazon India. At the same time, there's something very interesting. He is also an IT professional with 15 plus years of industry experience and is currently working with TCS where he's playing the role of an IT project manager, managing a Fortune 50 farmer customer. He believes in the power of storytelling and says anyone can become a great storyteller if they follow the process. He firmly believes during this trying times, the world needs more storytellers who can share their message with the world and bring the good forward. So ladies and gentlemen, please join with me and welcome, Mr. Haridosh. Thank you so much, Coach and Radha. It is an honor and pleasure to be here. And hello, everyone. Thank you for watching. Uh, really looking forward to this conversation. It's a pleasure too, Hari, taking your time. <laughs> <laughs> well, Hari, I mean, the very first question is, you are an IT project. I'm just looking off your edification. I couldn't get it. <laughs> you're an IT project manager. And at the same time, you're a public speaking coach. It's quite tough. I feel it. Even that job is quite heavy. And even public speaking coach, you know, that is, you need lots and lots of practice. Could you please uh, tell us how do you balance this both? Great I'm question. I'm talking about TCS a lot, okay? <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's, it's not an... Uh... It's not a, the first time that I've been hearing this question. At least I've heard this question 15, 20 times this year itself. Uh, and the key here is that uh, when you are passionate about something, when you really like doing something, you take the time out of it. Uh, so I love when I am helping people learn about public speaking and storytelling and other things. So that's my passion, uh, which I'm slowly transferring into making it bigger. Uh, yes, TCS is there, project manager is there. It's a lot of squeezing in and out. I like uh, I like to study about productivity. I like to you know, apply some other things, having to-do list, having calendar set up. Uh, so if somebody says, yeah, can we have a quick meeting? I'll say, okay, let me check my calendar. Also, it is a lot of hard work. So I, I'm not going to say it's a, it's a, just a, a magic wand that you now you are ready, now you are a coach, now you're a project manager. It is a lot of hard work. So yeah, I, I wake up quite early. I spend a couple of hours on my skills, on my uh, client. And then e even in the evening time after my day job, I, I do these kind of things. So I, I don't watch a lot of TV or a lot of news and things like that. I try to focus myself. And then, yeah, at times it, it stretches over weekend as well. So on 
at least on Saturday or Sunday, I'm doing a lot of client call, uh, my public speaking client call or, or working on my skills. So it is a lot of hard work and you also have to manage your work smartly. So uh, that that's a hustle. Uh, it's a continuous hustle, but it's a hustle that I've chosen. So I enjoy when I'm able to squeeze time in out and, and work on something which I'm really passionate about. Thank you. Wonderful. Hari, you're, I think call you Hari, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Hari Tosh is quite big for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Hari, your question here is like, see, when it comes to communication, people do fumble. Like sometimes going on a stage and all this. When it comes to public speaking, it's another real task. I mean, uh, quite a big, uh, challenging time. And here you mentioned uh, the power of storytelling in a presentation. Why are you, why have you taken this particular point here? Absolutely. Presentation is so, common, right? In your office, it's common. So uh, how did you uh, involve this uh, storytelling in this presentation? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So in office, we have to do a lot of presentation and typically there are two types of presenters. One is that, you no, know, they are reading from the slide, they're looking at all the graphs and buttons and figures. And you're like, yeah, he's doing okay or she's doing okay. But then there are other kind of presenter when they come and present people like amazed. They they like you no know, looking forward to what next he's gonna share. And one of the key differentiator between the first type of speaker and second type of speaker is they are trying to put in a story. For example, I'll give you. I'm from IT World. We do a lot of uh, demos and presentation to customer that okay, we have this new product build up and this is the feature and also. I'll see a lot of people doing, okay, this is the new button, this is the new function, this is the new feature. But then there are people who tell, come and tell a story about that. No, why was it that we came up with this particular design? Why, how is it gonna affect your bottom line? How is it gonna help you in generating more revenue? How is it gonna impact your business? And when you tell stories about that, how is it impacted my previous customer? What is it that no, uh, we missed last time and what have we learned from there? So when you story doesn't have to be all the you no know, mythological story, even the corporate stories, when you put in, in there, it, it brings in more attention and impact to your presentation. That's why even in corporate presentation, including stories, whether it's a short story or long story based on the context, it can really uh, pull in live in your life in your presentation. So who was your first inspiration? Who was Until my you, first that? Yeah, obviously you would have practiced your public speaking, but uh, getting story into presentation, somebody would have inspired you. You would have heard someone's mm -hmm. talk, right? Do you remember who was it? Absolutely, absolutely. There's, there's so many. I mean, yeah, we all have been listening stories since we were born and all kinds of stories. But when it comes to these kind of presentation, I remember I watched the Steve Jobs uh, uh, when he launched the iPhone and then iPad and he pulled out of envelope and, and the kind of stories that he put in for the launch of, even though it was the biggest launch of Apple, he didn't talk about all the new you know, semiconductor or chips. So he was talking about how this uh, having an iPad within an envelope and taking it out can affect a normal person. How is it? for a creative person. So he was all bringing in stories. So that was one. Uh, then there are other great storytellers like you no know, uh, Barack Obama is another one who is an amazing storyteller, amazing orator. Uh, the famous speech, I have a dream. That's also one of my favorites. So there are so many uh, storytellers at the at that moment, I can't zero in that oh, that was the one person, but it's been over the years. All my coaches and mentor, many of them have been an amazing storyteller like my coach Akash or world champion Darren. He's an amazing storyteller. I just completed his book. Amazing book with a lot of stories in it called 17 Minutes to Dream. So there's so many, uh, so many storytellers in the world and I keep trying to imbibe and learn from each and everyone that I can get hold of. I can relate with my mentor too. If you check out with Murli Sundaram, he just sees a picture and, and starts a story. In any meeting, mm -hmm. he starts a meeting with a lovely story. Maybe it's a story which I've heard many times, but the way he says, uh, mm -hmm. it looks as if it's a, something new. That's all about uh, like the, the story. That's, I, I love that because I'm trying to learn that skill from him. He's my mentor too. Lovely. He does it. I think you need to see that also. 
And now coming, answer. yeah, thank you, Rish. Now this the question here is that um, generally when people start speaking, they fumble. Is it right? That's mm -hmm. what we all do it. Absolutely. Uh, why do you? Th why people think something is a new skill which can't be done? I think since our childhood we have been telling stories. Isn't it? From the school days, college, up to parents, to everyone, we have been telling some stories. Especially I remember uh, during my school days, the way when I, when I take leave or when I give the, anyone gives me an excuse, I give one story over there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you? Absolutely. Absolutely. We all have done that here. Yeah. And um, now our I, kids. <laughs> absolutely. So yeah, I, I I totally agree to that. No, we all are born natural storytellers. And, and if you observe, uh, even if you are on a cafe, you in a restaurant, see when you see people interacting and talking to each other, you'll see stories after story. They'll be doing all passionate storytelling with all the dialogues. He said that, and he said that, and that's what that happened. And you can see that all the all the techniques, everything naturally comes to us. But what happens is when we go on stage or when we are doing customer presentation, our uh, brain takes us back to the time when. Uh, we were a caveman and and it it goes back to that part of the that side of the brain where it still feels that you no know, if we are standing up uh, we are probably going to be killed because there are predators out there who's going to you know probably make a lunch breakfast or dinner out of us so we go back to that zone that okay no this is our, now about our survival and that's where we start fumbling and that's where we feel, become really really uh, conscious of what we are saying and and that's where this happens uh, i i said to you uh, also before this talk right now if only we become as natural uh, we are off stage we all will be amazing great presenters so one of the things that we need to do is that realizing that you know, we are great presenter great storyteller great speaker and orator it's just that we become little conscious but when we understand that the audience is not against you but with you they want you to succeed they want you to win that's when this natural storytelling comes to us natural speaking comes to us and we get better of course it does require a lot of practice uh, we all need to practice but that's how it gets little easier as the as the time progresses uh hari now when you're getting a story into a conversation or in a presentation it could be a business meet or it could be a personal meet so how do you think we can get a story to a particular conversation? Absolutely. So there are multiple uh, story models. If you go and uh, search for story models, you can find umpteen number of models. Uh, I'm going to probably cover two of the story models, which are very famous. Uh, and you we can use it. One of them is called uh, uh, Then, Now, and How. So it starts with a lot of, no. Uh, food diet industry use it a lot you'll see a picture of a fat guy and and completely obese guy and then you'll see on the right side a guy who's completely slim six pack and smiling and then you'll see how does that happen is using this pill or this meal or this coach and this other things right so that is one story model where you say then what was the problem what was the issue what was the what was the thing that was going on what is it? What is the transformation now? What is the current state, which is supposedly the better state? So what is it? Is it is he you know, better now is having in weight in control? For example, if we talk about that no customer was struggling, now how is he you know, thriving and, and getting six figure, seven figure revenue? And the third part comes, which is how, which is where you pitch your product, your sales, your services, your thing that you do, the magic pill, the all the other things. So that is one story model. Then there's another uh, story model that a lot of time use called uh, Pixar story model, which is you say, okay, uh, every day something used to happen until one day this happened, until one day this happened and then something changes. So basically you take us through a journey where something was happening in a way. Then you show that, okay, something happened which disturbed the whole flow. And then after that, the the hero or or the the main character has to do something to bring that back to the previous state or make it even better. And this is how the story goes. So that's the Pixar model. So those are the two models and depending on the context, you can use uh, first model is very popular and very easy. Then now and how you can use it anytime. Other models is also used, but a lot of, a lot of it is used in story. I mean, uh, movie making or documentaries and things like that. A lot of Pixar model is also used there. 
Good. So all the two techniques for given should be used here very clearly. So how do you overcome? Because generally people fumble. Like when it comes to straightening, when you go on the stage or while presentation, it could be in a small area. But still, people, though they are prepared, still they fumble or they go blank. It's very common. So what's your tip for them? Because I, I yeah, totally are... focus getting storytelling in a, a business meet or present because that's a trend now. Mm -hmm. No one likes to listen sure. to this, oh, this point, this slide, that slide and all this. They love to uh, hear the background of that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So one thing is uh, you have to be prepared. Like you can't just build up, make up story when you go to that boardroom, to that presentation. So you need to do a lot of preparation. Uh, so that is one preparation and practice is important. And then having... Uh, a little bit of notes. A lot of people think, oh, I, I can't have notes. I cannot have a, a helping slide. But it is not about printing a five pages script, but having notes to you so that if you completely go blank, at least you can say, okay, this is was the point I was mentioning that gives you some time mental trigger. So that's, that's tactical part of it. Uh, then having a visualization practice where you no, know, you are taking two minutes, five minutes out of time, visualizing that, okay, I'm going to go there. I'm going to give the best presentation possible. I'm going to tell the amazing story and people are going to be amazed. And there are a lot of you know, uh, visualization audios available which help you visualize better. So doing a lot of these visualization ex exercises also helps you overcome. And then uh, it's a process. So you have to understand that nobody becomes a, a, a natural storyteller on the stage we are natural storyteller when you are speaking individually but we are not natural storyteller on the stage so if even if you fail a couple of times it's okay you get get uh fail get feedback incorporate practice and then go again so it's a cycle and the more you do the more stage time that you get the more practice time you get the more presentation time you get the better you uh become so there's there's no uh magic pill that you okay you take this pill and 10 rupees pill and you're done it's not like that you have to keep on going uh, but the more you go the better it becomes for you and then naturally you become as a storyteller on stage i mean forget about 10 rupees pill even 100 rupees pill doesn't work there <laughs> 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 10 rupees pill none of the pills okay we have to take some other pills, other pills yeah. <laughs> We have to Absolutely. take some other pills to make it active. I, I really resonate with uh, Hari. He says that you need to visualize, always visualize the end result, uh, the process in your hand. Visualize as if the, or you are getting a standing ovation. So this can motivate you um, internally because I do this. Sometimes even I get scared. Uh, seriously, I'm yet to learn how to link this storytelling into, the, into my conversation. But what I do is off late. I'm trying to write content based on any pictures. So that was like mm. I occupied still. I didn't do that. What do you say for this, Adi? Writing a content. Yeah, that's a great question. And how do I build content? How do I get more stories? That's one of the common questions that people ask. And in one of my workshop, I generally have this exercise of you no, know, uh, just spending five minutes every day. Uh, I, this idea comes from a book called Story Worthy, by written by Matthew Dix. Uh, and he says that no, it's your uh, homework for the life. And they say every day when you go to the, towards the end of the day, you take five minutes out of the day and write down what are the things that has happened. And we go on to next extent where you spend five minutes and write down what was your first, what was your last, what was your best, what was your worst, what was something that never happened to you again what was something that was very interesting what was something which happened to your family to your friend something you don't want to remember something you always want to say so when you start asking this question to yourself and noting down story that's where it becomes you get something called a story bank uh i'm, I'm like you no know, very proud when i talk about this one of my mentee uh, uh claire she took this uh, really, I mean, I, I've told this to so many people, but Claire took this to heart and every day she was noting down her own stories. She has gone through different struggles and different things. And she now has, can you guess how many stories she has of her own? Uh, now maybe around thousand. Uh, not yet, but she's like you know, working for a few months now and she's got more than 250 stories of her own. 
and that is within a few months and and she got so much inspired that she is actually taking uh, 121 stories out of it and she is now working on her book uh, and that book will come out later through the year so that is the power when we start collecting that you know, whatever small we think is small to us is actually uh, not small to others and when we start noting down story in story bank that's where we start building the bank whether it's the corporate world anything our first our last our our best so our first interview our last interview our our best time with the family our worst time with the team the best first time manager appreciated you the the last time that he appreciated if you start connect recollecting you start getting story after story after story and and the more you recollect the more stories you will have and that you can start using whether it's your corporate and other presentation or whether it's your you no know, uh, coaching presentation or anything you can start taking those story and start putting in your presentation hari i can resonate very very you said the word called appreciation it resonates with me recently i have run the content of the appreciation i mean I, just to develop the skill of story writing like how i start i start uh, doing this content creating anything i take i just don't just don't don't post it i write some content or make a story out of it sometimes i could it could be yeah some more of them are true but sometimes i mix up here and there to make it more lively this will help mm -hmm. really i agree with you the way you said that right start writing content i think she's done with 200 she can do more because every day we all have stories in the end of the day how do you start your day and something would have happened during the day if you make a note of it that's like a journaling i think uh, even one of my mentor also does it uh, my vp vice president uh, guna does it uh, his name is guna he does a beautifully journey how how was it how the day was was it productive and all those you Absolutely. need to do it yeah that's awesome and now let's come back with your book your book title is really awesome very catchy title could you please tell us what your title is or what is that book is all about all right thank you yeah thank you so much yeah. so this book uh, Uh, the title of the book is uh, small town bigger dreams can you show dreams. me your book uh, again please can you show us again? yeah yeah small town bigger dreams yeah yeah so <laughs> it's it's uh, it's story of my story basically so i i was born and brought up in a small town called jonpur next to varanasi and i spent uh, yeah my first 18 years or so until it class intermediate uh, there but in the second half i have traveled uh, yeah at least i've shifted 10 plus times in the different cities different states and in different continents as well and in 2020 when i uh, i came in uk in february of 23rd of 2020 and after a couple of weeks it was all pandemic throughout the world and i had a choice that time like all of us that to spend a lot of time on netflix prime and other things or do something which i could be really proud of so i was thinking over it and i was kind of you no know, uh, uh, reflecting on that and i thought about that my journey like everybody else has been unique and uh, what if i can document some learning some lessons out of it which could probably help somebody who is also coming from small town like me who's also from a hindi medium or local language uh, and coming from there and going through different phases of life so that's where this whole idea came into picture and then i went through some book writing course and other things and this book is a, a collection of 21 lessons that i've learned over the years uh, it's all uh, my own stories 99% of these are my own stories of what has happened with me and what is the lesson that i der derive out of it and and yeah it easy to use a uh, very simple 113 pages 21 lessons and uh, Uh, if at the end of every lesson you have two to three action item that you can start using in your everyday life to become a better version of yourself so that's the book all about good can uh, could you show us the content of the book absolutely uh so uh, it has got 21 chapter and uh, i'll probably show you you might have to because of lighting it might not come clearly but i'll tell you the chapters include like being mindful of your association okay. uh, thinking ahead uh, seamlessly seek mentors be <laughs> a mentor take failures head on careful of giving receiving feedback uh, advices volunteer trying new initiative morning rituals setting the mindset in the right way and so on so forth so these are like first 19 chapters and similarly you have 21 chapters 
uh, the the main thing here is you can take up any chapter at any point of time so this is not like a fictional novel that you have to go in a sequence so anytime you have 10 minutes 15 minutes 20 minutes half an hour you pick up a chapter it will be finished in three four pages and you can start applying the lesson so that's the whole idea behind this so after each lesson you have an action plan absolutely uh, i hope it's in a simple english huh? it is you can <laughs> you I'm... can guess small town bigger dream so yeah, the title is the very easy the title is very easy after the title is easy, easy. so so it, so it's written in a such a way that even a small town guy like me which i which i i still assume i am a small town guy so it's a very simple english uh, the english that all it and engineers and anyone who's trying to learn english can understand so it's a very simple english I am not a very, I don't consider myself a very articulate or having a lot of flair of English, very simple, practical language to uh, to read through and go through and understand. So, yeah, and that's one of the things that has been resonating also with people uh, because a lot of people message me that no, I, I love because it's very simple and, and it resonates with me. So I was really, really uh, grateful for that. Yeah, that is what most of us, even, even when I buy a book, I don't see the content. I just see the content, like and the, I don't see the cover page. I just see what, yeah. how the English is, how it's uh, or the, the space. And I, I'm not about the behind the author or whatever. I just see, is it okay for me? Because I'm not so good mm. in reading. I know my weakness. <laughs> but so I just <laughs> use two simple one, just develop the skill of reading because we have certain things which we need to develop as a coach. Absolutely. So uh, one is consistency, the patience, another one is reading is more required. I'm a kind of video person. I'm more into video. I love watching um, picture kind yeah. of. Thing. So reading, as yeah. you said, 113, oh, it's okay. 113 pages is quite a small book. And even the content yeah. should be very simple. Fine. Yep. Uh, very good, um, Hani, with your book. I'm very happy and wish you all the very best to sell Thank more so and much. more books. I think you utilize Thank the you. pandemic pandemic very well. You wrote a book Absolutely. in that pandemic, got a best Amazon seller. And now before we wind up uh, the session, Hari, I'll not take lots of your time. Uh, I would like Thank to you. know, what would you give us gentle piece of advice? See, as a coach, as a communication or a public speaker, we have to use a very simple English where a layman can understand. Because that's Correct. that's how they get connected with this. I mean, I mm -hmm. start using the dictionary words or jargon words. People really yeah. get bored. No, even Absolutely. every time they can't keep looking at the dictionary. The more simple we are in delivering, uh, it's easy people uh, can approach us. So based on this, Absolutely. as a public speaker you are, and uh, what advice would you think can you give for the, our audience? All right. So I think the advice that I'm going to give is uh, one of the advice that I mentioned in the book is called shamelessly seek mentors regardless of whatever level you are whether you are just starting uh, and whether you are in it whether you are in coaching whether you are a student regardless of where you are you can always get help from a mentor or coach out there because we all need help we all need no if like you were talking about we all need some accountability partner also because no we are lazy by by default we are lazy we need some time push uh, that you know, where are you what are you doing what is the next update so sometime having that accountability partner in the form of a mentor or coach or going out there and and uh, telling your problems to a mentor really helps you so i really really uh, advise everyone and anyone to get mentor i have mentor i know you also mentioned you also have mentors and coaches please seek help from mentors and coaches for whatever area and wherever, whichever level you are, because you can always go to the next level. Well said, Hari. I really stand with your points you. because I know uh, how I was and with my lovely community and with my mentors. And uh, you need to say, get in, like, we have lots of coaches who've opened up a mind. Uh, viewers, you may think that I know all this, I know this, but trust me, are you implementing? We don't implement. Maybe, oh yeah, I, now Hari told, oh, I know this point. Anu told, I know this point, but we guys we never have the task of implementing. So when we have a proper mentor, they tell us a quick steps to reach our goal. I always keep telling you, when you have a mentor, uh, before you commit that mistake, you uh, they can avoid you because they've already undergone this. You can save your time, you can save your money, and you can reach your goal where you want to be. 
because uh, my the entire career what i am now i go uh, i could say a big uh, thank you for my community tlc community and to all my mentors and the coaches who have supported me i would really stand with hari's point you need to have a mentor if you want to be a good coach right hari absolutely absolutely the coaches actually need to have more more mentors because they need more pushing more uh, pulling So yeah because they have more it. experience than us they have a huge uh, they have undergone lots of uh, ups and downs the pros and cons in life and they know exactly yeah. where you can do this where it is not required daily rituals trust me I never used to do it i don't do it what is daily yeah. rituals i'm uh, just walking i don't only yeah. walk <laughs> i do it waking up early the yeah. meditation all this helps absolutely i thank you so much for being a guest thank speaker you. today it's a pleasure to have you here and my dear viewers before we wind up So I would like to inform you once again that this uh, real talk show is on every Monday and Friday at nine fifteen Indian time. So I will come back with another speaker on coming Friday. Until then, stay tuned. Good night. Bye bye. Good night, everyone. Thank you for having me. I'll talk. Okay. Yeah.